This video has been brought to you today by A real time strategy mobile MMO combining open space RPG and world building mechanics And I think the name of it is Lords Mobile Maybe you've heard of it, it's only got 120 million global players That's a lot of people isn't it? And it was also chosen as one of Google Play's most competitive games And even won an Android Excellence Game Award thing in 2017 But what do you do? And while you look at these very nice graphics You play different PvP game modes, recruit and upgrade heroes And change your lineups to perfect your strategy to help you lead your kingdom to glory You can attack monsters and other world bosses that periodically appear on your kingdom map In order to get more resources And even during Kingdom War events, all servers are open to attacks from anybody, unless you have a shield, but don't tell anyone. Shh. So please go to the description right now and claim a gift code worth, well, whatever it says down there in the description, I can't read. Thank you so much for listening and please enjoy the video. I remember that. It was really good. Now I only wish they would do... Oh! <laughs> yes! Now I can do another Spyro video that isn't... That! Let me just look for some trailer footage then and start analysing the differences. Okay, that was a bad link. Let's try this one. You know what? Fine! This is what I have to do so I can cover something fucking positive in the Spyro universe, and I guess I'll just have to do it. Spyro Orange, the shit game conspiracy, do your worst. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful Spyros, and welcome to the Spyro Show, where I always have to do the dirty Spyro of deciding whether or not Spyro deserves to be slaughtered or Spyro. There's no surprises in this video, guys. I'm not gonna bother with anything. There'd be no footage of me pretending to pick the game up for the first time and acting like I don't know how good or bad it's gonna be. No, this game's a fucking train wreck. A train wreck so bad that you can actually look away from it. But the real question is, how did this happen in the first place? Picture this. You're a purple dragon, the year is 2004, and everybody loves you. You had a string of successful games ever since your inception on the PS1, you got a bad case of diarrhea in about 2002, and then you went to the doctors, got it fixed, and came out with three pretty damn good Game Boy Advance titles in an isometric style calling back to your roots. But one thing remained untouched like my disgusting face. Would you ever, ever work alongside your fellow PS1 rival mascot platformer character Cash Banuka? And the answer is yes, you would. On the Game Boy Advance again. Two PlayStation characters never working together until they jump ship and end up on Nintendo. I'm equal parts confused and aroused. And I mean, the Cash Banuka GBA games were great alongside the Spyro ones, so there was every chance this crossover could work. Two separate games were released, and unlike Pokemon, were completely fucking different games in nearly every way. But ones you could still connect to the other with and swap trading cards and battle each other. Plus, developed by the same team behind the already great Crash GBA titles, Vicarious Visions, also responsible for the Insane trilogy. Not one thing should have have gone wrong. The planets were already aligned. The lottery was already won. That glass of coke you ordered at the bar, it had ice and no lemon in it. Everything was already successful before they thought of the idea. And then they flummoxed it. Here's the title screen. Spyro is just chilling on the side. Someone gave Sparks too many laxatives. And the story of the game is as follows. Cortex and Ripto are friends now. That's it. Yeah. What, you're not okay with one of the most anticipated crossovers in history not having a single reason for these two franchises to get together? What are you, Dr. Neo Contact? Yeah, sorry, this is all you get, and I would comment more on it, but I can't, because this game just acts like they've been in the same universe this entire time, and it's weird how it's never addressed once. The main bad guy in Crash Bandicoot, and arguably the most popular bad guy from Spyro, just together. That's that's all you get. Even Hunter can't believe it. He looks like he's seen some shit. Anyway, Spyro and the gang have found out about some mysterious portals opening up all over the world allowing Riptox, Ripto's lackeys, to pass through. And upon hearing this news and Sparks shouting gleefully, LET'S GO! Spyro just kind of looks sad about it. I think he knows exactly what kind of game is about to happen. We begin the game and you, you know what, it looks alright. No major complaints in the visual department, but I do have a few other complaints. I can forgive the 2D nature of the game even though the isometric collectathon stuff was done perfectly fine in the other GBA games, but what I can't forgive are the moves you have to work with here. You run, jump, head bash, and breathe fire. No charging, no gliding. You know, the shit that helped make Spyro what he was. He's a dragon with horns and wings. So you already have a restrictive 2D plane 
complete without the moves that make Spyro Spyro. Plus, whenever he breathes fire, he doesn't really breathe it as much as spit it out. <laughs> And this spitting isn't just a visual annoyance, it's an actual inconsistent attack that just goes wherever it feels like. Attacking enemies is never as simple as burn them with an area attack when they're in front of you. It's more randomly spit hot curry all over them and they might eat it or decide they're not feeling like Indian food this evening. And if you get hit and lose a bit of Sparks' health for the love of God, just look how long it takes for butterflies to appear out of a burned sheep to give Sparks his energy back. Compare this with any other Spyro game. Hell, even the GBA ones. Why does the game force you to wait? Well, there's a jolly good reason for it to be fair, but I won't say what it is just yet. For now, let's just enjoy the first level we come across, Castle Cruising. Okay, maybe the 2D stuff was just an overworld. Now that we're in the levels, maybe this is where we're gonna get something closer to Spyro. You know, the glide, the charge, collecting things. So yeah, what's going on here then? A jeep with a cannon. You're fucking kidding me, right? This is how you decide to kick off your epic Spyro and Crash crossover. Spyro extremely awkwardly driving forward in a little dinky jeep, firing candy corn at brick walls while listening to surfing music. Come the fuck on. Look, I get it. Spyro had some vehicles in his past games, but firstly, they were actually fun and controlled really well, and secondly, were only a tiny part of the other games. Not the proud front-facing image of the entire start of the adventure. And it doesn't help how, despite how simple this all looks, it still manages to control and play like runny, sticky shit dropping out of an old lady's toenails. That was absolutely disgusting, I apologise. Just look how slow this entire thing plays out, and look at the amount of stuff that doesn't happen. <laughs> And whenever something does happen, you'll be lucky to even get it out of the way in time. The cannon just fires wherever it wants to. If you hold the button, it goes way too fucking far to hit anything. And if you tap the button, it just drops out like the most pathetic shot put throw in the Olympics. And as you can see here, no matter what you do, it sometimes works and sometimes just doesn't. You then reach the end of the stage and get greeted with... <laughs> that! Fucking that! You did it! Oh yeah, I did, didn't I? Back into the overworld then, and oh look, here's Moneybags. A classic character, a staple of the Spyro series, so what does he have for sale then? Oh, cards. Cards that do absolutely fucking nothing. All right, well, do you at least feel satisfied when you collect the cards? Oh. That was a very flaccid experience. Okay, then there's a gate here blocking my path. Oh dear, how do we fix that? Well, hit A over and over again, of course. Really? They considered that a level in their game. You've got to be shitting me. <laughs> Next level, okay, cool. Let's have a look here. Fall in, roll out. It's... Well, it's a tank. Just rolling along, firing endless bullets at nothing until everything is destroyed and then you win. Huh? By the way, wanna see how long this level lasted? Sped up. Yep, it's actually still going. I'm bored even editing it, so let's fuck off. Okay, so while we look around for the next mini game, because I guess there's no actual fucking levels in this thing, let's talk more about the platforming. Every world has you do the same thing. Run back and forth, burning enemies and gathering loose gems while you look for the next mini game portal that costs gems to enter. That's it. That's the whole game. There's nothing else to collect, interact with. This is all you fucking do. If you die, which happens very frequently because of the fucking screen size not showing you what's coming up, or, you know, just bullshit happening. You get sent back to the last place you exited from and only lose the gems that you just grabbed after that place, which means you'll naturally grab them again getting back to the area that you just died. So what's the point of death exactly other than to fucking annoy you? Oh, and by the way, this ice world, just burn it, make it water. I'll drink it, I'll spit it out, I'll soak it up and then I'll eat it. It's in this world that you realise just how imprecise and slippery the jumping is. And no, not because of the ice. Look, there's no ice here at all, but just look how unstable Spyro is. He's wankered. This is barely worth calling a game in the first place, especially considering that every gem you collect is completely worthless. You'll naturally just grab them all, moving around to the next location, so the charge that you incur at each gate means fuck all. And buying more cards from 
money bags? Well, why would you do that? You can't do anything with them. You don't unlock any other games. You don't get a bonus, so don't bother. Even the gambling wheel isn't fun. Look how lifeless this shit is. Anyway, next stage, altitude adjustment. Now this sounds like a Spyro flying stage, thank Christ! That's all right, Caddy, I'm a Spyro fan myself. <laughs> Maybe it'll be like the Speedway statues of the PS1 games, but in GBA style, isometric or something, I don't know, but I can't wait to see what it is. Please be good! I said please! This has to be a joke. Come on now, when's the curtain gonna be lifted? When is the game actually gonna come out here? This is exactly the fucking same as the tank stage, but just facing forward. How did they get away with this? Look, it's even the same obstacles, come on! The next level I found is Breakout. Very slow and easy, Breakout. Okay. Next level, Rumble on the Ramparts. Okay, it's a battle minigame? Fine. I mean, Spyro throwing Molotov seems counterintuitive at best since he's a dragon that literally breathes the shit that Molotovs explode into. But there's one tiny issue with this minigame though, and one that I don't need to explain. I think you can just see it. <laughs> Actually, maybe I'm just crazy. There's no problem at all. It looks perfect to me. This then follows on to boss one. Oh, oh my god. It's it's Crash. It's Cash Banuka. This is the first time we've seen these gaming juggernauts on the same screen. And what are they going to do? Very slowly bomb each other to death. Okay. I mean, not only is this identical to the level I just did a second ago, but this is just fucking unplayable. The first time we ever get to play with these two together, and they're trying to set each other on fire while Spyro stands totally still and the frame rate curls into a ball and shits its pants. This is the most ungraceful thing I think I've ever seen. I mean, after the disaster of Enter the Dragonfly, maybe I should just expect terrible frame rates from him from now on. Anyway, after that devastating murder, everyone is now suddenly okay with each other, and Sparks lets us know somehow that we got another power-up from that. Now we can use our flap ability to gain some extra height. A flap ability. We got an ability to use the wings Spyro already has to flap. A flap ability. After reading that text box, I'm already done with this game, which is a shame because we're only on World 2, the icy world, so of course everything is just more slippery and unplayable than before. But maybe, just maybe, the games will get a little better themselves. Oh, oh no, 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 they don't. Welcome to what I like to call the Spindly Johnny Simulator. You walk very slowly with magnetic shoes, sticking to the top and bottom of the stage to avoid shit and picking up one missile at a time. I repeat, one missile at a time to fire at someone who may or may not appear in front of you. This is the game. Can you not smell the boring? It smells like cheese and wee. Next game, it's Breakout again. The game after that is tap A really fast again. And here it even makes less sense than before. Why does Spyro need to do this under a time limit? Does the ice refreeze? Does Spyro run out of his own fire breath? Fuck off. The next game is Tanks again, except now I can do this. <laughs> The next game is another flying one. And no, not like the Speedway sections on PS1 in Game Boy form, you twat. It's another fucking flying shoot 'em up on a scrolling vertical plane. Yes, identical to the tanks and the other fucking flying stage. Same obstacle, same objective, but now you're in a ship. Lucky, lucky us. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky. Oh my god, what happened to Sergeant Bird? It looks like they gutted him and turned him into a stuffed animal in a jetpack. Boss 2 is up now. Crush and Gop. Highlights of all the Spyro games for sure, but... Not here. Look, come on, man, you aren't even trying to hit me. And once you head bash Crush enough time so that he can get zapped by his friend's own cannon fire... Follow me, Crush! Yeah, I'm so excited to keep this adventure going. Can't you see my excitement? I'm excited! And why wouldn't you be? Because World 3's levels are just as great as before. More breakout. More tapping A over and over again. <laughs> More Molotov battles where you stand still and win. More flying. More tapping A over and over again. More flying. Again. That's it. By the way, you'd think, with this being a fucking Crash Bandicoot crossover, that you would even have more levels dedicated to Crash Bandicoot-style platforming, or hell, even have Spyro GBA-style stages within the Crash universe. That would be badass, but no. Instead, you're forced to do the same three or four mini-games over and over again with slightly different skins until you win the game. I am so fucking happy I didn't own this game as a kid because I'd be ashamed of it. 
Which is why I own the much better Crash Purple and my sister was stuck with this one because she has the taste of a fucking peasant. And this is the one thing I fail to understand. Even with all these identical repeated mini games that often are just copied from each other and slightly flipped on the side or something, there's no need for the game mechanics to even be present in these games other than you just reaching the goal. You don't ever need to fire a shot in any of the flight or tank games because you never get anything for doing it. Sure, you need to get rid of a couple of roadblocks or something, but it doesn't feel good or satisfying. You don't get more gems or even more cards, and they do absolutely fucking nothing, so why couldn't they just throw them in there? There's nothing to collect, nothing to challenge yourself with, just a barren and boring set of copy-paste obstacles you need to blow away with unlimited firepower. Where's the fun in that? You know what this feels like? Action 52. And when your game starts feeling like Action 52, you need to look at yourself in the mirror 52 times and take serious action against your face. And when I say that, I mean give it a wash. Because... You made a bad game and need to be clean. Boss 3 now, and what do you do? I think the real question is, what do you not do? And that's, be challenged. Hey? <laughs> hey? <laughs> Okay, then. All you do here is jump over Nina tons of times until Coco and the Professor break free and then fire up the oven to lift up the spikes and jump out of the arena. That's all you do. I can't believe this is a game. Oh, and by the way, we can glide. We've been able to glide for ages. I just forgot to mention it. Yeah, you know, the thing the Spyro has always been able to do. But the reason I forgot to talk about it until now is because it doesn't change the game at all. In fact, it just creates more leaps of faith, which sucks. And it's not really gliding as much as it is having a fit in the air. And now we hit Wampa Jungle, a Crash Bandicoot world, but don't get your hopes up. More of the stupid bloody fucking chirpy chirpy jeep jeep. More of the stupid bloody fucking flying. And my favourite part about this flying stage in particular is that you aren't even given a single sodding indication to what's coming ahead because of the camera angle which led me to getting stuck with no way to avoid it and now I'm giving up the game for the rest of my sad old life. So back to what I said ages ago. Why is it that the game forces you to sit there and wait for the sheep to burn to a crisp before you can even grab the butterfly to get Sparks back to health? I'll tell you why. Because all the footage I got lasted me all of half an hour. Yes, I didn't finish the game, but I nearly finished it. And that's why it forces you to wait. Not only because the game is pathetically short and needs to extend its runtime, but because it was spent doing the exact copy-paste mini-games over and over again. I probably only got an actual 10 minutes of original gameplay here, and even then, that original game wasn't any good at all. Oh, yeah, if you want to finish the game, you have to beat every mini-game three times. You are pulling my leg. Nah, I'd never do that. It's too hairy. Shut up! Anyway, yeah. Beat the game another two times over to finish it. Trust me, I've played it myself. I'm just saving you the trouble. <laughs> okay then, that makes everything even fucking worse! That's lazy game design and only brings the total playtime up to an hour and a half at most! What were they thinking?! Considering Spyro's heritage as well, and not only what he managed to do on the PS1, but the Game Boy Advance as well, along with Crash, I don't know why they made this, it's an embarrassment in comparison. And now, I feel like I need to shoot my Game Boy Advance because it's tainted from one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. No, I'm not joking. Spyro Orange the Cortex Conspiracy, and now that I think about it, this game feels like a fucking conspiracy, and the poor soul of a Game Boy that had to be infected in order to play it gets the slaughter today. <laughs> And if it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you. Please remember to stay beautiful, and don't make me do that again. But Thank you so much for watching this video on Spyro Orange, everybody, or Spyro Fusion if you lived in the UK. Yes, I know I should have been calling it that, but I don't really need to give the game any justice at all. And thank you so much to every single name on screen right now that has helped support this channel via Patreon through YouTube's rubbish with the demonetization and all that nonsense. And special thanks to the top tier supporters, Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Andy Ellis, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Chris Ingersoll, Exopaz, Kyle Way, Thomas Olson, Mills Kahai, Alicia Knightley, Super Spyro Fan 20. 2010, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton-Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Ellen Ripley, Kirsten B., QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.